Guatemala repairing our 40-foot sailboat using epoxy on the bottom and on the top. Back in Hurricane Barrel, back at Isla Mujeres, the front of the drone got slightly shoved and the delicate little ribbon cable that connects the gimbal to the rest of the drone was just slightly cracked. I was able to find, figure that out with the help of other YouTube videos to make the repair. I wanted to make a repair video about how our little dynamic flying camera was broken, then I simply was able to revive it. It all seemed to be going well, despite the tiny bits and meticulous finicky work. I pressed the on button and all new alerts were popping up on the screen, more than before the attempted repair. So I only did a little more digging on the Amazon comments about the ribbon cable after coming to Guatemala and found out that it is common for the DJI drones to reject non-factory parts. So I can't buy a replacement part, not even from another drone that is of the same model built-in obsolescence strikes again. With our old DJI drone, the Spark, I could see the top of our mast, although the image quality is no longer what we're used to. Since we were struck by lightning, we moved on to trying to repair other electronic shit. We thought all three solar panels were fried, but they were showing some signs of life. It's going up to 16 volts. Wow, really? 13 volts. Our friend Nick came by to help us with the solar panels. He has a multimeter and knowledge about the diodes that might be the problem. Check the, the resistance across the diodes and it was hundreds of ohms, which it shouldn't be. So the diodes are screwed on. Yes. If there is high resistance, the diode is dead because it should allow, it should allow a connection of energy one way through the other. So maybe one way it says no, but this way it should say yes, but it's saying nothing both ways. So we determined that the old diodes would have to be removed. They allow current one way and not the other. So if you have one, one allows you to shut off different parts of the panel, so power won't flow from one side that shade from one side that is sun to one side that shaded. You can shut down part of the panel. So if you have a handful of panels put together. Um, one that's covered in the shade won't get all the power from the other panels and heat up the, uh, the shaded area. It's, uh, solar panel cells act as resistors uh, when they're shaded and they get hot yeah. if there's power flowing through them. This would require melting the solder, which is a low melting point alloy. But coaxing the available equipment to work was quite the task. So much better. Put on our gas on the other. So these were fairly easy to get at the main street here. What are these called? Yeah, diodes. Get it all in there. Everything we got. It required all available hands on deck to install the new diodes from the hardware store. Why are there so many hands required? Because we don't have any equipment that actually works. Got it. Nick 
also brought us a shiny new charge controller. And after hooking that up to our batteries and the solar panel, we would be able to monitor the results of the repairs in more detail. Well, zero watts, so something was still wrong. I convinced Robbie to remove some of the quick connections Ooh, like and replace them with some of our heat shrink connections. Since it's your solar charger, yes. are you sure this is the negative on this side? Yes. Come on, solar panel. Fourteen volts, four point one amps. Nice. Sixty-three watts. And blow up the solar controller. Yay! And with the all-new solar charge controller and new connectors, it became apparent that the second solar panel was still working as well. Ah. Okay. So this one, this one might work. Okay. That one's working too. <coughs> well, two out of three is not bad. Yeah. Putain, il prend à bouger ce truc-là. Il est juste là. Moi, c'est bébé. Yeah, it's like movie. It's a, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze in the yard. We were in the midst of installing new forward port lights. The dreaded task had finally arrived, to sand the fresh fiberglass inside the boat. We close off all the work areas as best as possible, However, it's always a messy task. Today is a great day to try out the barrier coat, Total Protect, the two-part barrier coat paint, uh, kind of a primer. And that's because I've made some of these hatches and it's great on the bottom of the boat because a barrier coat protects really well from blistering and osmosis. It will really stop the salt water from coming in. We can also use this on, on top, the top side of the boat, because there's some areas where I've just made uh, wood, fiberglass, and epoxy, and I really want that wood inside of there to be protected from the elements as well. So it's a two-part kit. <laughs> These cans didn't make it by UPS very well but I assure you that we <laughs> transported them with care. And this is the thinner for it. So this makes it easier also to spray and roll on it. It just makes it a little smoother if you want the paint a little smoother. I read all the instructions already. I'm going to use the container that Total Boat supplied for us that have the measurements right on the side of the cup so for easy mixing i'm just going to crack these open give them a good mix as, as much mixing as i can and put them together so i'm going to be making a small batch i'm going to be going for number one and one this is three parts and then the remaining one part will be so the base and then the catalyzer How long should you mix the two parts? Well, it's kind of like brushing your teeth. The more care and the more time you put into it, the better. You can hum or sing a little song to help pass the time. I had already made sure that my surfaces were all cleaned up with a solvent such as acetone. Now came the best part after all that hard work. The next day, I'm going to use, because the cup is full of paint, so I won't maybe necessarily be able to see my measurements, I'm going to use the scale. This scale screen doesn't show up on camera at all, but I poured roughly 300 mils worth of 
base, and then 100 mils worth of catalyzer for a total of 400 mils. So that's an easy three to one ratio. mixed and then applied my second and third layers of paint to all the projects that needed it. Now for installing those windows. We never tried this method before, so we practiced on some scrap acrylic offcuts. Drilling and tapping was proving to be difficult, as we could not seem to make the successful taps in the soft plastic every single time. It screws in pretty smoothly. Not shaking. It doesn't pull out. Sometimes the tap would simply not bite and hold the bolt in place. We had to make sure not to drill too deep with the drill bit. And then with the tapping bit as well. And then Robbie discovered that the only way that a flathead tap was going to start properly was if he used the countersink first. First, he would need to drill a hole, then countersink it, and then tap it. Yeah, you have to clean the hole. If, if not, the, the... Yeah, you have to clean the stuff. You have to make sure the hole. hole. This one where the hole was clean works 100%. Now that we had our method, we could dry fit everything together. The ledge that we had created for the glass to sit in was quite small, so Robbie drilled the initial holes with great care, one by one. Once the initial holes were made, he would then need to align them with the holes made in the plexiglass. One by one, he drilled, and then we tested the fit, and then he drilled, and then so on and so forth. And basically the window is held in place and then 5200, 4200, something like that is what's really going to hold the window in place. We taped off all the areas that we would not want the sealant to touch. On the outside, I tried to wipe away as much excess sealant as possible so that the tape would be easy to peel away. While on the inside of the boat, Robbie bolted everything on. More and more sealant squeezed out as he tightened down the bolts, and then I continued to carefully flatten and wipe the sealant. Doggy hairs in here. Choco. We're moving more holes in the bottom of our boat. The 
entirely stick here, we're gonna need to make a real thick plug. Well, we're gonna grind from the outside, we're gonna grind from the inside. Looking good. The boat is now ready to paint with barrier coat and anti-fouling. With all of those projects going on all around the boat, it was difficult to escape the yard and to enjoy the beauty of Guatemala. But I managed to go for a walk with friends in the surrounding fields. Careful of snakes. And what did we find? Bird eggs. Some small treasures and interesting natural little gems. I don't know what these are. Leave a comment and let me know if you recognize this plant.